Hello, and welcome to a guided story where you are the leading protagonist in this story. You are standing in the hallway before the great hall. The smell of a hot breakfast is drifting out of the hall. You take a few steps and then enter the great hall. Above you, you see the enchanted ceiling. It is showing a golden sunrise with a gentle snow. And the floating candles are providing a flowing archway above you. You spot your friends and go over to join them. You sit down and fill your plate with delicious breakfast foods and pour in a refreshing drink into your goblet. As you enjoy your breakfast, a rumour has passed down the table that the giant lake has frozen over and at midday there will be an ice skating party. Your friend mentions a new potion they are working on, which will keep the whole body warm on a cold winter's day. They have asked for your help in finding their final ingredient, the feather of a phoenix. You glance over to the teacher's table at the end of the hall, and you spot the pure white beard of the headmaster, who, with a twinkle in his eye, gives you a gentle smile. You see his hand wave his wand, and a piece of parchment in the shape of a small bird is flying over to you. You catch it out of the air above you. As you unfold the paper bird, something falls out and is floating down onto the table. A small red feather mingled with yellow and orange. A phoenix feather. Your friend is speechless. You look back at the headmaster and give him a thankful smile. But how did he know? As the feast comes to an end, you follow your friend out of the great hall and they lead you down a thin secret passageway to the right that you are sure you have never used before. As you reach the end of the corridor, you watch in amazement as a large wooden door appears out of thin air. Your friend opens the door and you both walk inside. The room is enormous as big as the great hall twice over. It is filled with old chairs and tables, large cabinets and paintings, as well as piles of old books, large wooden boxes and trinkets of gold, silver and copper. You look up to see thick white pillars coming down from the ceiling. However, there is only a quarter of these pillars above you and they do not touch the floor. It feels like old magic that has been enchanted for many years. Your friend leads you through the maze-like room and you pass a tall marble statue of a centaur holding a chalice. You head round the corner and come to a small clearing of stone. Your friend tells you that this room is only usable for those who have great need of it. On the floor in front of you, there is a small grey cauldron bubbling away. Smoke rises from the cauldron in colours of red, green, blue and purple. As you kneel down in front of the cauldron, you drop the feather above it and it floats down into the potion. The feather begins to dissolve 
and the bright green liquid becomes a whirlpool, morphing into a deep sapphire colour. The potion settles down and sits completely still like an idle lake, undisturbed and peaceful. It is ready. Your friend pours it into two large vials. You decide to try a small sip now. Instantly, you feel a new warmth trickle down your body, from your head, through your neck, and shoulders, down your back, into your legs, and all the way down to your toes. You check your watch and realize it is nearly midday and everyone else is bound to be at the lake. You put the vial into your pocket and leave this mysterious room. You begin to run down the corridor. Your footsteps are echoing through the stone tunnels. You finally come to the main door. It is twenty feet tall and made of solid iron with circular handles. Through the gap, you can see fresh, thick snow layering the castle grounds which is glowing from the midday sun. You run outside and leap into the snow. Despite being midwinter, The sun's rays provide a gentle heat on your face and your potion seems to be working its magic. As your entire body feels as though it is being warmed by a small fire, you start to wander down to the lake. The layer of snow crunches under your feet. And the air is cool and crisp. The giant willow tree over to your right has a layer of snow on its branches. The tree gives an almighty shudder as you see the snow falling off and disappear into white dust. As the willow's bare branches wrap around itself, As you come to the end of a small patch of trees, you see a few of the teachers are standing in a circle on the lake, gently waving their wands right before your eyes. You see the ice start to form together, pillar by pillar, and create a large stadium of ice. At the entrance is a tall archway of ice with inscriptions carved on the top. The teachers turn to you all with a smile and beckon for each and every one of you to go inside. Standing by the entrance is the headmaster along with the head boy and girl. They are standing beside a large cooking pot filled with what smells like hot chocolate. The headmaster calls you over with that same mischievous glint in his eye. He asks if you would be so kind as to share the remainder of your new potion with him. He did provide the final ingredient after all. So you take the vial from your pocket and hand it to him. He removes the lid of the cooking pot and adds the rest of your potion to the hot chocolate. You share a knowing smile. And then the head girl spoons a ladle of chocolate into a tall tankyard and hands it to you. You enter the arena as other students queue for their newly enchanted hot chocolate. As you emerge from the archway, you see an oval-like arena held up by huge pillars of ice. There are powerful enchantments at work here, and you can feel the magic in the air. 
Hanging from the top of the pillars are the four flags of each wizarding house. Their colours seem brighter than usual. The ice in the middle looks perfectly smooth, like a layer of silk. And in this arena are many seats which are carved from ice, but all of which have blankets thrown over them. As your gaze wanders around the arena, you take in the sapphire and grey, the crimson and gold, the emerald and silver, and the yellow and black, which are strung all around. You walk around the small path just outside the rink and find a seat with the rest of your house. A few of the students begin to take to the ice and start to skate around the arena, laughing and joking as they slip and slide while finding their feet. Others begin to cast magic spells and bright blue spectrals appear in the form of their favourite animals. These animals run happily around the arena. They jump over the wizard's heads and all of them begin playing together. You also cast your spectral animal using the spell. A stream of blue emerges from your wand and takes the form of your favourite animal. It dances around you playfully and you feel a sense of comfort as you watch them join in with the others and you can't help but smile. A few of your friends are getting ready to go onto the ice rink. You are hesitant at first, but one of your friends kneels down and casts a quiet enchantment on your skates. This is very advanced magic, and so long as you wear these skates, today it will be impossible to fall. A new excitement floods over you as you head out onto the ice. You skate at whatever pace you feel comfortable with. The cool breeze is refreshing on your skin, but your body is warm and your feet are steady. You haven't felt this free in a long time.